Dave. Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Look at that. I'm going to get kids from school in a second. Logan, just woke up, huh? Look at that. Well, it's going to be too long. I'm about 10 minutes here. Talk about some stuff before I go. Before I uh, get a kid on the road now. Some water. Super Bowl tears. I want to talk about Super Bowl tears. Every week, every two weeks, I tend to update here. The teams, I believe, are going to be, I think, are real Super Bowl contenders. Um, I'll give you my updated tiers uh, in a second. I got a little preview here. Well, well, I'm going to give you a little preview on the Cowboys and the, and the Saints. My perspective on the game. It's a big game this week, tonight, actually. A big game, people realize. Um, really curious to see how Dallas shows up t- uh, today because, uh, I mean, you know, we, we know the Saints are good. We know the Saints are Super Bowl good. But can the Cowboys somehow, I think, that's for me personally, can, can, can the Cowboys be competitive in this game is the question. Um, I, that, that's why I want to I want to I want to see. Um, and to be honest with you, the spread went down a half point to six and a half points. Um, open at seven. I actually was going to take Dallas actually initially uh, on the points plus seven, and then Demarcus Lawrence started running his mouth about you know he's gonna do the Saints and about choking them out and all that. And because of that, I'm taking the Saints down because I don't know if he realizes that the Saints still need this game. The Saints still play for uh, the Saints are still playing with something. They're still playing for home field advantage right now. Them and the Rams are tied, although. If the playoffs are today, they, the Saints have home field advantage, and that is going to be huge for the Saints if they get home field advantage because I don't think anybody could beat this team in the Superdome at all. So I would have taken the Cowboys on the points, but now I'm, I'm going to bet tonight and bet the Cowboys to uh, – but bet the Saints, rather, to uh, cover all seven points uh, – well, six and a half points now uh, tonight on the game. Um, I do hope the game's competitive, though. That's, that's, that's what I'm praying for, the, the game's competitive because – there's like games this year have been pretty good. I, I won't lie. It's been some, we had some really good games this year. Um, some some bad, but, but mostly good. Uh, and this is actually a, a, this is a marquee game in a, a lot of ways because the Cowboys are the Cowboys, obviously. The Saints are obviously the best record in football. Um, so this is I, I want this to be a good game. I want this to be a competitive game to some degree. You know, I'm a Giants fan. My, my team's out of it anyway. So it doesn't really matter what they do. But I, I get a feeling that after Lawrence's comments a couple days ago, I... <laughs> I don't. I don't think Drew Brees in the company. And if you know Sean Payton, the coach of the Saints, if you know Sean Payton, how he is, he's he's gas the pillow guy. He will embarrass. He'll you'll look for an edge to embarrass you. That's why I'm taking the Saints to cover the spread. Um, but we can only pray for a competitive game tonight. So looking forward to Cowboys Saints tonight. Should be a good one. Uh, hopefully a good one anyway. Um, my Super Bowl tears updated now. Um, I tend to do this every two weeks. You know, teams I believe are. I mean, you have playoff contenders, obviously, and you have Super Bowl contenders. Um, uh, to me, there's a, there's, a, there's a big difference between the two. Um, and I have Super Bowl contenders now. Uh, to me, I've only they're real, to, to me, there are really four, maybe five teams that are true Super Bowl contenders. Like, everybody, you know, you, you take 12, 12, 12 teams to the playoffs, of course, and it's what it is and whatever. But to me, they're, they're really there's the only four, maybe five teams that, that can win a Super Bowl, in my opinion. Obviously, the Saints, I just mentioned. Um, and right now, I would put them as a favorite to win the whole thing because – if they have home advantage, like again, I'll say it again. If they have home advantage throughout the playoffs, I don't, I don't think anybody's beating them there. I don't think, I think the Rams are going to be in there. Um, Drew Brees is having a fantastic year, of course. Uh, I would put, obviously, I put uh, uh, the Rams in that conversation, obviously. I mean, they're 10 1 as well. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned with some of the injuries they've gotten in the last, last couple of weeks. Not having a Cooper Cup, of course, especially. It could be, could be a problem down the road. Um, but I think the Rams are, you know, Sean McVay, what he's done is, is he's done a phenomenal job there um, coaching a team up and whatnot. Um, so the Rams, of course, in the conversation. The Chiefs, um, definitely, in, definitely there. Um, as long as the Chiefs have home for advantage with the playoffs, they will also win the AFC. I, I, I don't see New England. I don't see Pittsburgh. I, I quite frankly, I don't even see the Chargers winning in, in, in our in Arrowhead. If the Chiefs have home for advantage with the playoffs, it's over. It, it's that simple. You got to say the Patriots, of course, because Tom Brady and what he does, and and and, and the team. They're, they're getting healthier now too. Um, as long as Gronk's healthy, they'll have a chance to, to get back to the Super Bowl, of course. But I, I do think this is Gronk's last year in the NFL, honestly. I think he's going to retire at the end of the year. But the, you can't not put the Patriots in the conversation. The Patriots are definitely the team in the, in the mix. Um, and you know, with Belichick and whatnot and what they do, I just I just have a hard time believing they're going to win the Arrowhead. That's that's the only uh, pushback I have on the Patriots um, in, in terms of. Uh, Home of, of going back to the Super Bowl, but if again, if they can actually, you know, somehow f- get the Chiefs sleeping one week and they can actually get home for advantage. Remember, if these two teams end up tied as well, the Pats did beat the Chiefs early in the year. They will have home for advantage going to Foxborough, and that will be an issue going forward for the uh, <clears throat> any team that's playing through through uh, New England. So Kansas City has to keep winning and keep winning. Um, and uh, I bet that's fourteen, right? So I have, I have the Chiefs, Saints, the Rams, the Chiefs. 
the Patriots, and I'm going to reluctantly put the Chargers in there because I was really impressed with how they bounced back. And look, I know it's I know it's Arizona, but how they bounced back against Arizona on on Sunday after losing a game they should have won against the Chargers um, two weeks ago. Um, it says a lot. Now, the only concern I have for the Chargers going forward is Melvin Gordon. Will Melvin Gordon be healthy? Um, he's, he, from what we're hearing, he's week to week. Uh, a slight turn in the MCL injury, whatever. Um, that could be a problem going forward. I don't know. We'll see how that goes as we get into uh, December and to January. But right now, uh, the, I, I think the Chargers are one of those teams that if they can if they can stay healthy and if Phillip Rivers is not making any mistakes and whatnot, um, they could be a problem going forward. Um, I'm actually in line with my – hold on. I'm actually, I'm actually in line, line with my kid, and I think somebody's going to stop me to give me some paperwork. Hold on one second. Let me see what comes here. Hi. Hi. Have you done your parent survey online yet? Not yet. Okay. If you don't do it online, you can do paper pencil okay. and send it with your scholar. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. What, what do you need to have it back by? Um. Definitely. It's due on the seventh, but the sooner the better. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye All right. Bye. Mm-hmm. Parent paperwork. <laughs> you know, I thought these days are over. Doing like little scantron looking little things here. Nope. Not over yet. I gotta do paper, 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 paperwork for the parent, for the kids, for the kid, for Eli. So, uh, Ruben Foster, Ruben Foster. This, this, you know, the NFL season has been very, very good. I, I'm glad there's no talk about the anthem. I'm glad there's no talk about kneeling. No talk about you know domestic violence and all that shit. And that could come unglued now because of this Ruben Foster fiasco. Um, the, you guys know uh, last week the the Niners cut him because. There was another incident. He got arrested last Saturday in Tampa for another uh, incident with his ex-girlfriend, I guess, whatever she is now to him. Whatever. She got arrested, and then um, the Niners cut him, which rightfully so. This is his, what, third infraction with the team? So he was on the waiver wire for a couple days. I think Tuesday, is it Monday or Tuesday, that the Redskins actually signed him off the waiver wire. And um, hold on. There you go. Um, and... There's a lot of criticism, of course, across the media and across the landscape about how the Redskins just went ahead and signed up without even really doing any background or extensive background checking on, on, on Foster. And I kind of agree with the with people in their thought process. I, I, I'm not against second chances, but it, it, it is bad optics for the Redskins to just sit there and just, boom, sign a guy with, like, less than 48 hours after he got cut by the team from getting arrested. I mean... And I mean, I know you're in the middle of a playoff race, and, I, and I'm sure Ruben Foster obviously is a top ten talent. But I mean, given the optics, I mean that that looks kind of bad. So I, I do share criticisms uh, with that, with the with the league, with people around the league, the media, and people, uh, of course, uh, fans who don't like the way it's done. I'm, again, I'm not against six chances or Ruben Foster, depending on the case, was let this play out because this is the Ruben Foster saga is kind of is a lot more. Confusing to realize because the, the woman in this case, uh, the girlfriend, ex girlfriend, to call her, uh, she has admittedly lied in the past about uh, things that happened that Foster allegedly did to her. So who's to say that she's not lying here as well? I'm not saying she is or isn't, but there's no proof, proof of that. Number one, and there has been establishment that, she, that, that has already been established in the past that she's lied before. She's admitted this in, um, publicly before. So uh, I, I mean, so I, I get that that angle, but. Uh, I'm more concerned about the optics of the Redskins here. Why did they sign a guy out, out, out of the blue without even doing a proper investigation? That's all I'm saying. So, all right. So, uh, tomorrow, I'll come back here tomorrow. I'll give my predictions for all the uh, championship games in college football. Uh, my best bets, of course, um, um, in the NFL. My top, my top five te- my top five best plays, gamble plays of the weekend that I think you guys should gamble on. Um, and what else do I do on Fridays normally? Oh, I, I give my thoughts on the Thursday game. So I'll probably give my thoughts on the Cowboys and Saints and We'll see. Hopefully it's a good game tonight. I I hope so, but I don't know. After, after Marcus Lawrence talking shit a couple days ago, I, I, I'm i not very confident now in the Cowboys. Um, with, not only not winning this game, but keeping it close, but I hope I'm wrong there. So I'm on Twitter, EJPN7, uh, Erskine Media, Erskine.net. Until uh, then, I'm going to wait for my kid to come out now and go make go McDonald's, get a fry or something, or get some ice cream or something. I don't know. All right, guys. Later. Love you guys.